I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Wow, this is really exciting. I don't have a lot. You see, the problem, I think the problem is we actually met each other in person. So, like, now it's like, what do we talk about? Yeah, what do we, we we saw each other in person, uh, and then what do we talk about? And then I immediately got COVID. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and then I wore my, I wore a mask around my house for three days while I consistently tested to make sure that I didn't have COVID, so I wouldn't spread it to my girlfriend. Yeah, but luckily you're uh, you're all clean. I think I think I got it. I think you guys got entered the infectious period like right after I left. Probably the only and thing ev- I could everyone say. we were around is has been negative so far, so we're we're the only ones to get it. And and we initially thought well, the the initial thought was it was from a chili dog. Um, because we went to uh, an apple orchard and they had chili dogs, and Erica started having some funny tummies. And well, the, I don't know why you got I don't know why you got chili dogs at an apple orchard. That's your first mistake. Well, they used to have this big lady there that made the best chili dogs, and since they've oh. she's gone and and they put up a food truck, and it was a food truck chili dog. And um, oh well, Brandon, it, you're not making this better. <laughs> No, well, that's that's why we 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 initially thought that when Erica um, was having the symptoms that we were like, oh, it's that chili dog, and then we you know we we test pretty regularly, and then she was like, oh shit, I'm positive, and I was like, oh damn, that wasn't a chili dog, that was COVID. So we maybe it, maybe it was the chili. It dog. could have been a combo. It could it could be an and. It doesn't have to be an or. It could be an and. Yeah. And, uh, um, I do want to. I do want to point out something you texted me during the week, though. This is very important. Okay. Um, because we were talking about whether or not we were going to be able to record today. Because one, you said that your voice sounded like Stevo uh, ate glass, if my memory is correct. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was uh, yeah, yesterday yeah. or the day before. Um, but but before that, you said uh, I'm fine, except for the part where my felt like my, my blood was burning. Yeah, yeah. My blood hurt there yeah. for a little bit. It was it was super is, fun. Not great. There was a, a period of like two hours on Thursday from like 11 to 1 when like I was just shivering uncontrollably and I was aware of all my blood veins and they were all uncomfortable. But then it stopped. So mm. it's been smooth sailing. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's usually fun when stuff like that happens. Yeah. yeah. One time when I got a uh, one time when I got a fever, ever, the world around me changed shape, sizes. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it was it was like a hundred and nine fever. It was one of those ones that you need to get hot. Like you're on the bat, you're, you're on the borderline of getting hospitalized fevers. Um, back- John, John, I hate to tell you, but one of four is the line where you can start having seizures. So one oh nine is like definitely like one oh four is like when you're supposed to get into a cold bath and like start thinking about going to the hospital. One oh nine is probably you should have been in the hospital by now. <laughs> Eh. Uh, uh. eh, whatever, whatevs. Um, yeah, I was delirious when that happened. Maybe, maybe this is all just a like my entire life is just a hallucination from that point as my brain is dying. It's possible because that that could have done something to your brain for sure. Yeah, that explains a lot. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it expl- it would um, explain a whole heck of a lot. Yeah, it would. That's a little. That's concerning. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I I think if my memory was correct, I was at like a Boy Scout thing like just before. I think it was around the time that Super Mario World Two came out on the. Uh, Super Mario World came out on the the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, if my memory is correct. So that would have been like two thousand two. So, so your like your entire life since two thousand and two has been an actual fever dream. It's possible. It is. I mean, I, I can't prove anything. It's an option. It would be, it would be a really oh god. So I was gonna say it would be a really shitty ending to a sitcom, but then I was remembering I've been so. Christina started watching Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Okay, have you ever heard of that show? I've heard of it. I've never seen it. 
It's a show. They have like musical numbers every single episode for some reason. Uh and the the main character has some sort of access to personality disorder for sure. Oh, okay. Like there's no doubt. Um and she's like a stalker, hence the crazy ex-girlfriend thing. Yeah. Cuz she was like if my memory is correct, she was like in a relationship with a dude over a summer camp once. And then she has a mental breakdown in New York City, which is, you know, basically relatable. I mean, because yeah. I had one not 90 minutes north. So, you know, that's not weird. Um, it's just what happens in New York. Uh, <laughs> and then she sees the dude. And then she moves cross country to live where he lives. And then huh. she basically stalks him. Yeah. No, not basically. Literally. She literally stalks him for the like remainder of the series. And I don't know what the fuck is happening. Cause it feels like it feels like they're trying to write her character like Tina Fey from Thirty Rock, but it yeah. feels it feels cringier than Tina Fey in Thirty Rock. But I can't stop watching it. Sounds like a regular relationship to me. Brandon, ah, uh, <laughs> there might be problems that we need to talk about. I mean, you two, uh, like y'all, like you and your girl, you go out for dinner together. She orders one meal. You're peering through the bush. It's perfect. Oh, I just I just listened to Fred and Ro- the Re- Fred and Rosemary West episode of last podcast on the left, and that's that just reminded me of that so much. Oh, is that on the nose for a thing? Yeah, it's I have super to catch, on the nose. I have to catch he back had, up. Oh man. So the the dude was like the dude had like a, a peephole yep. that he would look through while his wife did sex work. Was was she aware of it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, as long as the client was also aware of it, that's. I mean, probably not. Oh, well, actually, probably because the dude probably was like super gross, and you could probably hear him across. The oh, did you just hear heavy breathing through the wall? Heavy breathing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that seems like what it would have been. At least you know, based on based on the description of the dude that they gave on that podcast. Yeah. It would have been pretty pretty sweaty and pretty awful. Sweet. So I'd say. <coughs> yeah. There's a cough that's not going to get edited out. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's. That goes with the territory of having a systemic illness that attacks that starts with your lungs. So yeah, it's fun, uh, and then goes to your blood. Uh, yeah, it makes apparently. your blood hurt. Apparently, I didn't know that. That's not a cool side effect. So whatever variant that this brings is, a, don't don't get it. That brings a new meaning to the the term blood boiling. Yeah, what's that come from? Does that come from like an actual? Or is it like like the, like the bends? Is there like a root in that sang from the bends or something like that? I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know either. I mean... Because you can make I mean, your it, blood boil. I, I, like in a pressure chamber, you can force someone's blood yeah, to boil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's but that's just like physics. But then again, so is boiling in general. Yeah. You know what? Let's start the episode. Oh, because right. <laughs> Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm looking up the origin of Blood Boil. Fun. I, it's it, it's probably a little bit fucked up. If, if history it's, serves... It's from England, so I'm uh, going to assume it's from England, so probably. Probably fucked up. Uh, Today, we're taking a trek to Anderson, Indiana, uh, November 1996. Anderson, Indiana is a city with a steady year-over-year population decrease, uh, its peak being in 1970 of over 70,000 to the 90s, 59,000 to today, 54,000, according to census data, and a quick 45-minute drive north east from Indianapolis. I I will say this, that's not that precipitous of a decline, for what it's worth. It's a steady decline. It, it's a, cont- it's a steady decline, but it, it, it's just that's, always going down. Yeah, as far as declines go, it could be way worse. It could be. They're not a ghost town. Yeah, no. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it another... Not until after this episode. I mean, we can do the math and guess when it'll be a ghost town. Um, 
Its primary thing was industry, becoming a powerhouse of natural gas production in 1897 and rapidly uh, exporting it until it just flat ran out in 1912. They just Whoa, go- it's weird. It's o- it's almost as though it's natural gas is not a renewable resource. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Uh, transitioning to electric production until GM pulled out, who had employed 23,000, literally a third of the population. Uh, also about the same value as the population decline. Go figure. Sounds about like uh, Kingston to me. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Although I think Kingston's population might be semi on the rise. It's I don't know. Gentrification's making things weird in Kingston. It's making they're 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 it's maybe rising. They're they're displacing and then replacing. So I don't know how yeah. much it's 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 actually changing, but they're just like kicking people out and then making things expensive, then bringing more people in with more monies. If my memory is correct, one neighborhood like resisted gentrification just by being like, no, fuck you. And just like doubled down on on just being annoying to the the local population or the the, the invading oh yeah yeah there's yeah. there's there's a few different things going on and there's some like shady things with the different realty companies I mean the city's like fully committed to it now with the Kingstonian projects it like their their goal is um basically their 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 tur- the goal is to turn the entire like uptown into like s- exclusively for people from new york city that are living in the hotel that they're building that they're, they're so they're getting rid of the municipal parking lots and where the municipal yeah. parking would have been they're installing a um it's not a hotel it's a business complex where there's apartments built into it so you're like living where you work oh i hate it and they're all, and that's why all the rent for like you know, you know, uptown like North Front Street and that it's like over yeah, two yeah. grand to live like on top of Dallas Hot Wieners. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me right now? No, no. Those are shitty ass yeah. apartments too. Yeah, yeah. Like that shit's getting ridiculous. Good so, Lord. so that's what they're doing. Is they're, that's how they're displacing people and and putting it in that uh, uh, cool place. It's good and cool. Good. And, and cool. then the other guy where the um uh uh. What's it? The, not the halfway home is the wrong thing. There was a, people with special needs had a, a building that they ha- had in the area. Group home, yeah, group home. There was a group home, but then they said they they wanted to like clear out those types of people, so they shut down the different group homes in the area. And then uh, I think some locals were like fighting it, and then the the realtor we're fighting the realty guy who's been buying out all the places in uptown uh bender mm-hmm. so they were like locking him out and then s- allegedly somebody under his employment might have burnt that building down yeah yeah cool allegedly. good and good allegedly cool and good cool and good cool and cool good, and good. Uh, yeah. Our story just happens to take place at a GM lighting plant, specifically Plant 9. Like that segue? It's a great segue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, plant 9? Yeah. Uh, wasn't there, like, a something from Planet 9? It was a really bad B-movie. Probably. Anywho, I can't make um, a good joke when I don't I don't have as, as complete of an information about the subject matter. Yeah. Uh, my primary source for this was a blog by Dan Noland, uh, who on his old school, uh, like database style, like for porn from 2000 structured blog was, um, that's such a specific, that's such a specific poll, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Boyer, who downloaded so much internet porn onto a computer hard drive. It stopped working. Yeah. 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 But that's really how his blog is structured. It's like that old school porn database is, is like how it was. Um, uh, uh, was listening to a podcast and heard that a podcaster, so Dan was listening to a podcast, was having trouble verifying uh-huh. information from George Ebhart's book Mysterious Creatures, a book we referenced before and will probably reference again. Um, Dan took it upon himself to drive to the Anderson Library and take images from the Anderson Public Library on microfilm. Uh, so this is coming from the microfilm 
at the Anderson Public Library is essentially where all this information is coming from, and, and huh. uh, Dan Noland is the one who made that uh, possible. Uh, to se- I have to do something similar to that for one of the cryptids we have to do. I had to drive to... One of these days, I'm going to drive to Kinderhook and do it. <laughs> How far away is Kinderhook? Uh, it's, it's not that far. It's okay. like across the river. Okay. Through the woods. Uh, to set the mood a little, GM is no stranger to environmental decimation, having released 1.6 million gallons of sodium thiocarbonate-laden fluid uh, used for bleach and extracting silver, um, uh, and killed, a, to be precise, a dick ton of fish, so they're no longer introducing chemicals to uh, wildlife. Uh, enter where, stage... R- yeah? Where, so so where was where where's the evidence of GM doing shady shit? I need to see the proof. There's, it's... Where's the proof? Exactly. When have they ever done anything suspicious? Has has anyone seen GM, the physical entity, the company, do a thing? No. And and because we know that, that companies are people, by the law, unless somebody sees the person that is GM do it, they didn't do it. It's just facts. It's oh god! You just see. Oh, I'm having a brain fart. What's the big transformer? Oh no! Which the big one? That's like a city. Metroplex. The big one. Metroplex. Metroplex. Yes. Or there we go. All right. Pretend I remembered Metroplex, and mm-hmm. then you're like in Indiana, and you just see this like all the GM buildings get up and form into like a giant mecha transformer thing. Anyway, it would have been a great joke if I could have remembered that. Um. Could have also been Enter Scorpinox. stage right. Scorpinox is Decepticon. The, uh, so is Trypticon. Yeah, but Scorpinox awesome. You're thinking of a different Scorpinox. Because oh, the I? Scorpinox I'm thinking of is a city former. You're thinking of Beast Wars Scorpinox. Oh, which is a very different I am thing. thinking Beast Wars. They are, very, they are two oh. discreet individuals. For, but okay. for some reason... So what happened was... So fun story behind that. Uh... Hasbro didn't realize that people actually care about names. Oh, they um, that's an oversight. So they didn't realize that people actually care about like the idea that there's this character that has a specific name and like you know they have this specific personality. Um so they yeah. would just like make characters that had the same name that were completely not the same character and so like completely divorced from the original character and they'd be like why are people so upset that, that that nobody likes this Prowl, even though it's a totally different character? It was a thing. It happened yeah. in Robots in Disguise, and it also happened in Armada. Um, and the, uh, yeah. the, Why is everyone confused that this city isn't a scorpion? Yeah. Oh, the other thing, oh, too, is has, um, in Beast Wars, originally, uh, this has nothing to do with the podcast whatsoever. You're, you, you're the one who brought up Metroplex, which completely do Half nothing. of the podcast has nothing to do with the podcast, That's therefore true. making it back to being on brand. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, <laughs> so originally in the Beast Wars uh, storyline, the first Beast Wars comic that exists, uh, yeah. the Bat Optimus Primal and the Alligator Megatron are actually supposed to be the original... Optimus Prime and Megatron. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's your cool. that's your Beast Wars fact for the day. Beast Wars fact for the day. Oh, I can give you one quick, I can give you one that's related to strippers too. Oh yeah, give me that one. Okay. Uh so you know how um, picture what Black Arachnia looks like to you right now. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh so the way that they, they designed Black Arachnia is they went to a strip club. And one of the animators based her off of a, a specific stripper. That's so funny. Okay. So, so Black Arachne is based off of a very uh, off of a specific person that exists that we'll never know there, the name of. We'll never. I wish we knew who it was. They should know. They. I mean, they're using someone's likeness for a. a property. Yeah, but. It's it's not like it's not like they took a picture. It's like they went yeah. watched it and then that that's the person. It's like, like an artistic interpretation of that person as a spider. Yeah, yeah. That person the person yeah. who made it was like super horny for that person is all I can say. Yeah, yeah. Um oh, real quick before diving back in. Uh for the the jackalopes listening, this is the mystery goo option from the vote that was out there. And because it ended up being a tie or someone said, "Well, why not do both?" 
the other one from the vote will be my next one. So there won't be a vote for the next one because it, it's going to be the other option. God damn it. I, right. I'm just saying because it, it came out strong for Goo and then people were like, well, the other one might make John mad. Yeah. Uh, and, okay. and then it turned into like a split decision because they want to see John mad. So I'm, I went with this because it had the lead at first. I have to say, I have to say, making me mad? You can't make me mad with an episode that you did the research on. If I'm the one who yeah. discovers the, the, the Young Earth Creationist link... And then I spend three hours looking into Young Earth Creationists and how it relates to this thing so I can basically tear it apart. That's when I get really mad. Yeah. And, and the other option, I don't... Do, I, I'll, I'll do some more digging, but I, I don't think it ties back to, to YEC stuff. Um, it's just a thing that seems like it could. Um, yeah. Anyway, enter stage right, the Herald Bulletin of Anderson, Indiana, with an article titled... Creature and Plant Nine Pits by Ken De La uh, Bastard. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that's not how that's pronounced. It's it, it's spelled Bastide. Bastide. Yeah, or Bastide. Um, an, intern, an internal Indiana Department of Environmental Management memo confirmed that a, quote, creature of unknown origin or type was found in the sludge pits at Delphi Interior and Lighting Systems Plant Nine, uh, a subsidiary of GM. When... Okay, it's okay. It's here. Okay, you have you have the you have the date in a second. Okay, okay. Keep going. Yep. Keep going. Both the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and IDEM confirmed Tuesday that General Motors workers found what one employee described as a squid-like creature when the pits were being cleaned on November 1996. So, was the uh, squid-like creature wearing a hat? Because this is very important. It it was not. Okay, so it wasn't early Kyler. No, no, it wasn't early Kotler. Okay, okay. This isn't, <coughs> this isn't this isn't the origin. Well, I guess this is an Appalachia. Is it? Indianapolis? Uh, is Indiana Appalachia? Uh, Where the mountains be at? I think Indiana's too I think Indiana's too far west to be Appalachia. If my memory is correct. Huh, maybe. Uh, the Herald Bulletin obtains the internal IDEM memo, which was dated on Monday. A 30-year-old plant nine worker. Um, that is 30 years of employee, not age, uh, said he, uh, sorry, said the earthworm colored creature was six to eight inches long with tentacles and possibly eyes. Um, several current workers said the pit contained antifreeze, stripper oil, and, uh, polyol. So, hey, maybe there was some black arachnia in there, um, <laughs> which is a chemical use oil. Because of the stripper it's oil. It's the stripper oil. Uh-huh. Um, also, no, Appalachia is not. Uh, no part of Appalachia is in Indiana. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, which is a chemical used for the formation of plastic bumpers. Um, the 30-year employee said the sludge pit had several of the creatures, one of which was taken out, killed, and then placed in a jar uh, where it sat for several days in the work area. However, it was later stolen. What? Um, someone took this man's goo monster. His his oh, his gooey squid. When you say goo monster, it makes me think it's just a it's just somebody who came in a in a jar. I mean, oh, oh. That, that brings back memories, doesn't it? Some terrible, terrible well, memories. No, th there's the so there was a a Twitter trend when Dream did his face reveal. Uh huh. And imagine if someone had a picture of Dream and placed it inside of a jar, and then came. Yeah. And that was the Twitter trend. I'm going to say I don't really understand anything that happened with that. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's like... That's that's kind of the part of it. Fine. That's kind of part of it. It's like, whatever. He did it. He did his thing. I feel like my nephew might care. I feel like this... I feel like, like that's... Somewhere is the line for, like, being the old. And I think the old... Is like knowing who Dream is, or not knowing. Mm. I don't know who. Like, I know he like cheated at Minecraft a bunch or something, was and never shows his face. Cheater? Yeah, he was the guy who like did a bunch of speed runs, and then it, like just insisting he wasn't cheating, and they're like, "Nah, he totally cheated." Oh, he like he like, yeah, he like modified the the like odds of things happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's that guy. People sent him death threats. Uh, I, I probably I don't know. 
Wow, I would never like. Have you have you been following the fucking chess scandal that's happening? No, what's ha- what chess okay. scandal? Okay, okay. So there was an over the board game between Magnus something or another, who's the grass, the chess world yeah. champion, right? Uh, yeah. Magnus Magnus Carlson, um, and he was playing against a guy whose name I can't recall. Let me just look up butt plug. You're not gonna ask why I'm looking up Bubba Cook? No, no. Uh, Hans Neiman. Well, I, uh, so why do, why does Hans Neiman and butt, butt plug relate? Okay, so wait, was he wearing a butt plug wait. that was like telling him that would vibrate to tell him the right moves to make or some shit? <laughs> You're making the correct leap, but that's it's it's so complicated. Did so, he wear a lush? So it starts out with uh, uh, Magnus losing. Right, a game okay. he should not have lost. Basically, um, after he loses, he goes to Twitter and he basically implies that he the that that uh, um, Hans Neiman Neiman was was cheating. Yeah. Right, and it's over the board chess. Right, so cheating's not yeah. like super easy for over the board. It's easier for chess.com. Right, yeah. which Hans Neiman totally did cheat on chess.com in the past. Right, so that makes this a wrinkle. Yeah. But over the board cheating, way more difficult, right? You have to have some kind yeah. of electronic device. Somebody, I don't remember what at what point it happened, somebody did in fact suggest that it was butt, a butt plug, a, a radio-connected butt plug that somebody could send Morse code messages to him through his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <sighs> Maybe that's how all the, uh, the mediums do it nowadays. Oh god! Oh god! A, a sex toy brand wades in on the cheating controversy, and it has one of the best lines I've ever read in the copy. One second. One second. Uh, they said, um, "Let me see." Uh, here we go. Here we go. Finally, <laughs> finally, sex toys get their well-deserved time in the spotlight," said Annette Ostrom, Nordic Communication and Brand Manager at RFSUAB. However, we want to nuance the cheating accusations since sex toys are incredible shortcuts to get people on top of their game in bed. Um, they hope it will return the butt plug to its rightful position. The hero. Oh, that's perfect. And this isn't cheating. This is the it's the winning move. Somebody they po- they made like a image that is a chessboard yeah. with a butt plug on it, and it has this isn't cheating. It's a winning mood. For the freedom of everybody. That oh, now for all the chess matches, do they have to like wave one of those like airport wands over your ass? <laughs> I don't think it actually happened though. No, uh, probably not. Did you see that clip of like there's a little kid who's really good at chess? Mm-hmm. He's sitting at a table, and uh, the, the it's on like a, a night show or something like that. And they're like, you know, you'll, we're going to let you play somebody. And then Magnus comes walking out of the back and the kid just starts crying. I'd probably cry. It too. was fantastic. Was he um, crying tears of joy or tears of like... no F- tears of fear? Fair. Like horrified. Like like you would have thought like uh, uh, like he, like Freddy Krueger was walking at him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sharon Morton. Great segues. Uh, a spokeswoman for Delphi in Detroit said plant officials um, said they were draining water from the pit when they found a bacterial growth. They described it as the type of bacteria that would form when organic matter is placed in fresh water. They consider it harmless. Um, Morton said the fresh water got into the pit when the sprinkler line broke. Morton confor- con- confirmed the sample, which is collected on November 15th, disappeared early December. Uh, she said that Delphi officials followed, in quotes, normal security procedures for a theft in the plant. However, she added, uh, there were no leads in the matter and it's not being pursued. So I really hate, I really hate that my, my inner skeptic is like, okay, this is probably all bullshit. But then there's my, there's also my inner anti-corporatist who's like, oh, they would totally lie if they like accidentally created life that was like an abomination against nature. Oh, yeah. So yeah, like, like 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 <laughs> like realistically not this none of this happened 
in the way like realistically none of this is like actual living life and there's no cover-up but there's that that anti-corporate like vi like trend that runs through me that's like oh they this fucking happened and they stole it and they hid it and they, this they is... broke the ev they got rid of the evidence of their crime like the narrative in my head is that they were saving money by not maintaining their sprinkler system putting employees at danger which is a thing you see all the time, so it's like, all right, here's a big bad corporation. Sprinkler system fails releasing water, <clears throat> which shouldn't have been there, introduced into this, like, pit of toxic chemicals, and out of this, like, like mixture and abomination is formed that was never supposed to happen, and they're trying to, like, hide the samples and all that. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, honestly, if the sprinklers were just not working fun properly, that would be enough of a reason for them to try to hide it so they could avoid sanctions oh yeah. yeah yeah like to avoid the investigation where this they find that like they have not been maintaining the sprinkler system yeah that's true yeah tomorrow all of the epa said she questioned gm about what was found in the sludge pit during a february meeting in anderson saying that quote they did find something inside one of the pits all said they gm collected it and were going to have it sent off and tested to confirm what it was but the sample disappeared um, all said that this, the discovery of the living organism is not directly related to the EPA's planned inspection of the Plant 9 uh, for toxic materials. Uh, also, they're just going to find so many toxic materials. Like, it sounds like they have a pit just for toxic materials. Yeah, it, it does, it does kind of sound like they just have a pit that they put things that would, if it seeped into the groundwater, it would fuck up the local population insanely. What was in that, what was yeah. in that list again? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, like antifreeze, things... stripper, oil, and polyol. Okay, yeah, yeah. That none of those things are good in in your water. No, you no, don't no. want any of those in your water. Typically, you want none of it. Uh, th when they cleaned that pit, if GM finds something, they will take another sample and have it tested. Uh, she said they also want to find out what it was. All said she never ran across anything like this in her work for the EPA, saying, quote, I'm curious about it, she said. Uh, jo Lynn Ewing, a spokeswoman for IDEM, said an IDEM inspector uh, will be at the Plant 9 this week to look uh, into a complaint alleging hazardous material spills which uh, and will check in to report uh, the, the, of the life form. So what the fuck is that picture? That That's... That picture is an artist rendering of the oil pit squid. It looks like bloody cum. It it does. That's the it only like, like like the only way I can describe that. If somebody asked me to describe that, I'd say uh, bloody cum coming out of a skull. Yes, it looks like a few earthworms wearing a clan hood, and they got a bloody nose. Well, they are in Indiana. They are in Indiana. Um. It also kind of has like a like an old school sliver vibe to it a little bit. Oh, it totally has a sliver vibe. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah. Maybe maybe uh who who was the one who found the sliver who was the one who found the slivers? I think it was Mishra found the slivers if my memory's correct. I don't know. My memory of lore, I don't know. I'm not good at lore. That part of lore is weird. I'm not good with any part of of uh MTG lore. Or is it Vesner? Vesner I think made a uh and keep keep going. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. All right. Keep, keep, uh, keep it depends going. on what we find. Ewing said, "I don't know if it was just lost or if GM is trying to cover it up. I'm not concerned if GM is covering something up. We're hoping our inspection will provide some answers." Who's not? Wait so a second. Wait, like, a second. wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm not confer I'm not concerned that GM, the company that is known for covering shit up, I'm not concerned that they're covering shit up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not concerned about that. They're not concerned about that. The company that released 1.9 million, was it, gallons of, of fucking bleach maker into the water uh, is covering up a toxic waste spill, which is what they're there to investigate. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I was also inc More completely incorrect, by the way. It's not Mishra, it's Volrath, who's responsible for bringing the sl <coughs> okay. slivers to Dominaria. 
Morton said Delphi uh, will co cooperate with the two environmental agencies. Uh, our preliminary visual inspection revealed that the specimen to be harmless common bacteria. Um, she said we're triple, troubled by the theft of the specimen, which is delaying our, our ability to resolve the issue. We'll cooperate fully with the I EPA and IDEM on their investigation. Ha okay, okay. A follow up. <laughs> How yeah. do you look at bacteria and like, yeah, that's harmless. I couldn't do that. I could not. I feel like, I feel like... It's I feel like that's that's a that's a, a way for somebody to say something is way less worse than it actually is. Yeah, I yeah uh, yeah. See, I would try. Yeah, yeah. A uh, follow up nine days later in a in the same paper titled "The Creature from the GM Sludge Pit." Uh, it sounded almost like a sci-fi movie on the Late Show. They cleaned out a sludge pit at Delphi Interior and Lightings in Plant Nine and found a creature. Um, Immediately, many people visualized a monster crawling out of the pit with scaly skin, bulging eyes, and sharp teeth. And the mm -hmm. contents of the pit, uh, this is, they go over all the chemicals again, you know, yeah. stripper, antifreeze, polyol, um, certainly made it easy to conjure up spooky things that could live in such an environment. Except this creature was more like a fishing worm or night crawler, six to eight inches long with, <laughs> I almost said testicles. Tentacles and maybe eyes. Hey, it might be those might be <laughs> testicles. We don't know. We don't know. It we could have some know. strange, or like maybe it's a sexual organ that does both. I mean, that's that possible. I mean, if if we're if we're looking at if we're looking at like uh, the the documentaries that are Japanese hentai tentacle porn. Um, oh yeah. Uh, if my understanding is correct, those those definitely are sexual organs as well. Um, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, it depends on it depends on the the lore we're going for for the tentacle monster. Right? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it depends on can that particular universe is canon, whether or not it's like an ovipositor or if it's like weird weird cum that impregnates everything. We don't know. That, we don't know uh, if the only way you could come is by like rubbing shit into your eyes. So I just watched the new, also the new. Um, uh, Hellraiser movie, uh, pretty dope. I but uh, okay. You're gonna have to unpack rubbing shit into your eyes to come. Well, it's it's because I just watched the Hellraiser movie and the okay. Cenobites, the new one. I watched all of them, but the new one just came out yesterday. Um, are basically just like horny for pain. Yeah, yeah, that's like so the like, whole thing. That's yeah, that's the whole thing. So like, it, if there's a Cenobite, <laughs> and the only way they could come is by like just rubbing their eyes into shit like that that's but okay that's up their alley so my question brandon is where did where did rubbing come like where did the eye part of this whole come situation come from? oh because i mentioned the uh, like testicles and eyes like the same organ for both functions oh okay gotcha yeah and then and then i can with hellraiser yeah okay that um, makes more sense never mind Yep. Uh, new Hellers a movie, by the way. R totally recommend it. It's good. So is the new um, Monsters movie. You saw it? Yeah, I watched it. It was fun. Yeah, I, I do have one thing to say. It looks like uh, Rob Zombie's wife is having an orgasm the entire movie. What's it? Who's, who? What character does his wife play? Lily. Uh, yeah, true. Kind of. Kind uh, of. She's kind of yeah. like. She's kind of like doing poses and like styling and it just kind of yeah. looks like she's orgasming constantly i um, loved the mr orlock character oh he count orlock you mean don't call him a mister yeah. he's not a mister he's a count um, Count orlock the nosferatu looking guy yeah well that's okay so nosferatu is the name of the movie but the name of the character is count orlock oh i didn't realize that okay. yeah that's that's literally the character from nosferatu um but basically what ended up happening okay there's like a whole like there's a whole like lore behind this, but you yeah. remember the episode of the uh, the episode of SpongeBob where uh, SpongeBob is like Nosferatu because he's flipping the light switch. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a non sequitur joke that was never supposed to be like continued because the yeah. dude who made the joke who wrote the joke was like like loved Nosferatu as a kid, so he threw Count yeah. Orlock into the film as a uh, into the episode as a joke. Right. Um, okay. And then since then, 
the Nosferatu character has made multiple appearances in SpongeBob, and it was never supposed to be anything more than like a throwaway joke. To the point yeah. that there's now a, a prequel series for SpongeBob in which Nosferatu, the SpongeBob character, is a yeah. character who is running, who is one of the like counselors at the camp, and he's like a teenager. It's fucking insane. That's funny. No, it's a nightmare. That's crazy. God damn it. Also, who as a kid loves it? It's so slow. I, have you ever watched the full original Nosferatu? No, I, I didn't because I have a trouble sometimes watching black and white movies. Um, But no, no, I mean, but dude, like, you you latch on to fucking random ass shit when you're a child. Yeah. Like, it's... Oh, yeah. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. Like, it doesn't have to be good for you to, like get True. like obsessed with something i mean otherwise yeah. like why would why would so many children watch calio oh yeah right like yeah he's just a whiny little bitch yeah most of the people in the uh the monsters movie by the way are like people who have been in other rob zombie movies herman munster is like one of oh, the yeah. dudes from house of a thousand corpses and like it, it's a bunch he's of stuff yeah rob's got a lot of like re a lot of the Venn diagram is very close to a circle. Yeah. I, yeah. I, there's there's 100% less naked dancing, though, in this one versus That's, House of a Thousand Horses. I mean, Horses. it could have used more naked dancing. It, I mean, it, it was PG, so it would have probably bumped the rating up a bit. Yeah. Remember that in House of a Thousand Corpses? That, like, those weird, like, naked dancing bits where Rob Zombie's wife would dance naked? Yeah. yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was it was a movie. It it kind of derails from the entire like flow of the movie though. I will yeah, say. but it's a zombie flick. Yeah, you like you, he You can't watch a Rob Zombie film and think that it's going to have a linear storyline. There's so Rob Zombie makes great movies, but then for no reason it inserts chunks from things that you feel like should be in one of his music videos. Well yeah, because like that's that's what he does. Like there's a perfect movie and then he essentially just injects chunks from his music videos into the movie. Because mm -hmm. he's Rob Zombie and he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Like, in a nutshell, yeah. that that's like the definition of Rob Zombie. It's like, he's Rob Zombie. He doesn't care. Yeah. But all his stuff is good all the time. That's subjective. Yeah, I'm a fan of his stuff. You like Rob Zombie stuff. So, like... <laughs> I like Rob Zombie stuff. I, I will say if you if you try to watch uh the new Monsters movie um if you try to watch the new Monsters movie and you don't you haven't ever enjoyed any Rob Zombie stuff, you're probably not going to enjoy the new Monsters movie. Yeah, you're not going to like it. It's super Rob Zombie. It's like it is. I could have wa I I already knew that Rob Zombie was the person who produced that because I was like kind of half following it. Um for a yeah. bit but the fact of the matter is uh like if you didn't know rob zombie made it and you watched it and you have any passing familiarity with anything rob zombie has ever produced you'd be able to like it'd be obvious the it'd, stank it'd, is it'd on be, it the stank is it'd on. it'd be it. the same way if you were just watching a movie and based off how many close-ups of feet you were like oh this is a tarantino flick. yeah pretty much it's it's kind of yeah. the same vibe well i mean it's yeah or if you saw um Johnny Depp in a movie you'd now. Oh, it's Tim Burton. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, there were sev several of them, and the workers captured one, killed it, and put it in a jar. Then the jar disappeared. Who stole the creature? No one knows. But thankfully, at this time, uh, at least it's considered harmless. Environmental experts say the thing in the pit was a type of bacteria that would uh, form when organic matter is placed in fresh water. And the fresh water got into the plant when the sprinkler broke. A lot of these news articles like do the same little recap. Yeah. Um, and although the creepy crawly is considered harmless, an inspector for the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, uh, found it interesting. Uh, commenting she had never run across anything like this before in her work for the EPA. Um, the creature from the Black Lagoon, it's not, but hardly unknown thing, uh, made for some interesting conversation in these parts. And when GM cleans that pit, it will take a sample uh, uh, and have that tested. Um, yeah, sure they will. 
Yeah, sure. I that. Well, that, after the pit's been cleaned, they're going to take a sample from the already cleaned pit and go, oh, look. Yeah. Nothing. It's clean. Yeah, I... Yeah. I, I uh, it's I've, so clean there could be no contaminants that got into the the drinking water. Yeah, yeah. That's that I'll I'll believe that this creature exists before I believe that GM did a proper a proper sample of this to make yeah. sure that it wasn't harmful. It's a sample from like a bucket of clean water floating in the middle of the sludge pit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it came from the pit. It's, it's in the pit. It's in it the pit. The pit. Like, yeah. like it's in the pit, right? Yeah. Uh, Andersonians will sleep better at night once they know for certain that the creature from the pit is harmless. And uh, another article from the Herald Bulletin on March 17th, 1997, roughly four months after the sighting, uh, IDEM makes two visits to Plant 9, so now they've actually gone there. Okay. They're saying we're going to go check it out. They went, they checked it out. Um, after two <clears throat> inspections of the Delphi Interior and Lighting Systems Plant 9, Indiana, Department of Environmental Management if you were wondering what IDEM stood for, by the way, it's the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. Gotcha. Uh, is expected to release a report this week. IDEM is investigating an employee's complaint involving hazardous waste at the plant, which is located at the corner of 29th Street and Pendleton Avenue. Uh, we inspected as much as we could uh, that dealt with the complaint, IDEM spokeswoman Jolyn Ewing said. At this point, we don't have any plans to go back. This information gathering, uh, it might be referred to... Uh, other sections of item. Are are we sure? Uh, are we sure that like Joe Lynn Ewing is not like a worker for GM? That doesn't to- also work for GM. It seems like she might also work for GM. Cause like she's she's kind of she's kind of uh very much brushing it under the the rug. Yeah, like super duper in in favor of GM on this like before she inspected it she was like oh we're we're not worried at all about gm doing anything and now they're like we went there and we have no plans to go back this is before they checked the samples by the way this, they haven't released the report uh, 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 continue because the next the next paragraph is the one that just jumps out at me is like oh god oh yeah so the complaint filed March 5th raises three allegations that an unusual growth was found in the used oil pit at Plant 9, that hazardous waste was buried under the newly constructed walking path, and that there are hazardous waste containers in the area. I believe said, all three of those things are true. Oh, yeah. Like, none of those seem wildly at, like, at, no. out of, off base. I would, uh, yeah. Here's what I would say. I would avoid that, that GM plant because it's probably on the level of a super fun site based on what they're saying. Oh, there's no way you don't go in there and leave with superpowers. Well, um, if the superpower is cancer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Deadpool. Yeah, but like, his whole thing is is different. He's also got, yeah. he was also part of like Project X or whatever, the, the mutant thing. The thing that used Wolverine's DNA and all that bullshit. I probably got yeah, it wrong then- and I'm going to hear from Clay that I got it wrong. Well, it's, it's it, there's Project X, and what happens is once you're in Project X, then the, your mouth goes away, and you can't speak. Yeah, that's because your character's the merc with the mouth, and they made the movie where he has no mouth. Yeah, Weapon X, Weapon X program, but yeah, <sighs> yeah, no, yeah. that was that was a choice. It sucks because that- like, it really sucks because the first part of that movie, Ryan Reynolds like was nailing it. And then didn't. Yeah. Well, I. This is hearsay, but like, supposedly he was so. He liked Deadpool. Mm -hmm. And he was so annoyed at how that movie handled Deadpool, he made the newer Deadpool movies. Yeah. Well, he said that. Like, that's a thing he said. Oh, he did say that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they made the Merc with a mouth have no mouth. That's. Uh. Anyway, Ewing said inspectors checked the sludge pit at Plant 9, where General Motors reported finding a creature of unknown origin and found nothing. Because we know it was stolen. That's why they found nothing. Also, check under the sidewalks, too, maybe. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like the, the unusual growth is not the important thing there. The hazardous waste buried th- under a walking path and hazardous waste containers. Those are the two things that concern me more. 
it's it's almost like one might be trying to distract from the others. Yeah, yeah. That... Look under the sidewalk. Hey, see that sidewalk that glows? Yeah, that's it's not supposed to do that. Yeah. See how all the squirrels in the area have two ale, two tails and three eyes? I saw an albino squirrel. Oh, wait, for real? For real. Like that was completely oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I derailed the joke, but I was so excited to see it. I was on a bike ride and I yeah. saw it. Hell yeah. I didn't get to take a picture of it, though, because I was going like 15 miles an hour and I didn't want to slow down. Oh, you're going I, at a clip. If I slowed down, then I would like have, I would have, it would be ruin your to momentum. It would ruin my yeah. momentum. But yeah. You can't go back now. That, that squirrel's dead as fuck. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it has, a, it's an, it's an albino squirrel. So I don't know like what the, because like it doesn't have the melanin to like filter sunlight. So I don't know like. I don't know how that, like, what the prognosis on a, like, what the life expectancy of an albino squirrel is. I mean, it's similar to, like, if we were hawks and squirrels were cheeseburgers. True. If you just saw, like, a glow, like, a well-lit cheeseburger, like, rolling down the sidewalk. Yeah, that's, that's. Like, usually they blend in a little bit, and this one's just got, like, fireworks and glitter and shit flying yeah, off it. Yeah, that's true. Well, to be fair, that's how it was it was at the GM plant as well. Uh, but it, it was like literal fireworks and glitter. It was weird. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it was just screaming and bleeding from the eyes. Oh, its blood was uh, boiling for sure. Its blood was actually boiling, literally. Oh, uh, the, literally, and the workers too. Actually, everyone that worked in the sludge pit. It's weird. You know um, what I think happened? Kept... You know what I think happened? What happened? Uh, twenty six thousand people didn't just like leave the area 26,000 people just died because of GM being on un... uh, I, 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 I think I feel like it's as I was saying that I, I feel like I should make a note this is satire oh yeah th this is satire this but is also satire like, not a hundred percent this is satire Brandon this is sat this is satire in this specific case but the not a hundred percent is like it's not safe to drink rainwater anymore. So like, this uh, is this is satire, Brandon. Don't tell, don't say it's satire, okay? At some point, we transitioned into darkest timeline. Yeah, well, that that some people argue that was the death of Harambe, but it was way before that. Way before that. Way before that. I, I'd say it was back in like the eighteen hundreds, <coughs> easily. Oh yeah. Um. Anyhow. Uh, Workers reported uh, spotting several squid-like animals in the pit that uh, was used to store... Again, they just love why, listing antifreeze oil keep, stripper. Well, because they, they, they get paid probably by the by the word. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me make a note to, like, circle back around on something, maybe. There we go. Um... Uh, General Motors t told, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, we'll circle back around, IDEM uh, and U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, they had taken a sample from the pit and it has since disappeared. Workers said they didn't expect officials to find anything in the pit because it was emptied when Plant 9 operations were halted. Haha, -ha, more suspicious. Um, GM has twice requested demolition permits to raise the plant. Anderson Mayer... So, again, not looking great for GM's allegations that they're hiding toxic waste. When one guy makes an accusation, yeah. they get inspected, and they're like, hey, maybe we should just demolish it, you know? Before people can return, let's demolish it. Yeah. Um, Anderson Mayer, J. Mark Lawler, denied both permits because GM was not uh, has not completed demolition work at two former Delphi Energy and Engine System plants. Um, so also good on him. He's like, you can't keep halfway demolishing. It's almost like they're only demolishing the areas that they could be accused of, uh, doing shady shit in. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, hmm. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Uh, the, <laughs> the last available article is a March 28th print of Satire. the Harold Bulletin. Satire. This is humor. Uh-huh. Yes. This is all humor. Yes. We might be reading directly from microfilm, but this is comedy. Satire. Uh, so the uh, March 20th print of the Herald Bulletin uh, features what appears to be a screen grab of a Sun article titled Mystery Creature Found Inside Toxic Waste Pit Government Starts Real Life X-Files Program. 
Uh, I what? couldn't find the actual original sun. Yeah, it, there's the picture of the, the scan right there. What a stupid fucking headline. I mean, it's the sun. Yeah, but, like, it's such a stupid fucking headline. Yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, the, first, the squid thing disappeared. Then copies of its national tabloid story. Uh, it's been one strange occurrence after another since General Motors workers found a creature resembling a squid in a chemical pit at Delphi Interior and Lighting Systems Plant 9. Cleaning out the pit in November, they finished one of the tent. Or they fished out one of the tentacle blobs, killed it, put it in a jar for perusal of fellow workers. I, I before mean, it could be, yeah. It's pretty clear that this is probably just like a bacterial thing. Like they haven't described it like moving around really. So no, and I go into um, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, further down, I go yeah, into let's, like let's, colonies. Let's, let's keep going then. Um. Now the National Tabloid Magazine Sun has featured real-life X-Files creature complete with an artist rendition straight out of 2000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, but downtown Andersonians might have trouble locating a copy. The Anderson News Center was out of copies after the latest issue hit its shelf Monday, and the employees said sales were much brisker than usual, with people calling ahead in search for a copy. Uh, they, they weren't her usual tabloid buyers. Imagine, imagine, like... <coughs> Because your your like local like seventy thousand no not even this is like at this point like fifty something thousand people. Imagine if your like little town got a thing in a a, a a tabloid article and like everyone just lost their shit collectively and was like, "Fuck, gotta get that." If that yeah, happened, I if that happened every time Kingston was or Kingston or Poughkeepsie was in like a national thing, it, they would never. They would never... But then again, I think Kingston and Poughkeepsie have much higher populations. Yeah. But it's definitely Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Um, boat club owner Don Cole wanted a copy for him and his customers to read, uh, but he looked at five local outlets with no success. I'm just interested, he says. No one seems to know anything about it, except for the other three articles that came out that weren't a tabloid. Yeah, that's um, the weird thing. Yeah. The sun doesn't shed a whole lot of new light on the subject. They probably just listed off the exact same chemicals again and yeah, said the same uh, shit. What was it? What was it? Uh, oil. Uh, ah, here oil, we go. Antifreeze, stripper, oil, polyol. stripper, polyol. Yeah. And they probably just said the three things. The things. They did the yeah. things. Though it definitely makes some tantalizing reading. Squishy squid like creatures that look like nothing else found on Earth, thriving in a place where nothing should. Uh, a pit filled with toxic waste. Reporter John McGran writes, The story is featured on the same page as a woman who lived for 19 years without eating and a burglar who choked to death on his own flashlight. Okay. I do want to read the story about the burglar who choked to death on his own flashlight. That Be I can see. Because you can hold it in your mouth and fall. That's totally... That is pro You know, in every tabloid, there's usually like a handful of true stories. That's probably the true story. And the woman who, like, lived for 19 years without eating. Well, that's um, just some breatharian bullshit. Like, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's like a breatharian. That's, that's like, there's, like, I don't even, like, consider that even, like, remotely interesting. Because it's like, okay, yeah, she lied. Cool, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird how all these breatharians keep getting caught at Kentucky Fried Chickens and, like, K and McDonald's. It's weird. You know, it's weird. If you can get all your sustenance from only air, why, why would you have to go to a fast food joint? Why are you there? Well, I Just mean, to be fair, uh, like a McDouble is delicious. So like... They are great. So I understand. Uh, I'll avoid the alien speculation as far as colony of bacteria. <clears throat> uh, I was unable to find anything that came close to fitting the description of the creature from the oil pit. One of the uh, last theories online was that it was a mutilated earthworm. The other idea I will dismiss, mutated. but it gave me an idea. Oh, sorry, mutated. Yeah, because mutilated um, would be actually kind of plausible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Uh, let's ignore the presumption that the creature was uh, thriving and just reduce it to, like, maybe alive or dying or dead. Get to the reactor. Um, yeah. Uh, earthworms and other invertebrates on occasion will clump together like a rat king and can appear as a strange writhing alien-like mass. Uh, it's possible that something like this covered in toxic waste 
could have sparked the whole ordeal. Yeah. Um, to the left, I posted an image of a bunch of uh, worms that are all like stuck together. I'm not going to lie. That makes me want to vomit uh, because it, <laughs> it reminds me of the smell of formaldehyde. Looking at oh, that, maybe. I smell formaldehyde. No, it, there's a very yeah. specific reason why I smell formaldehyde. It's because, uh, do you remember in seventh School. grade when we had to dissect earthworms? Yeah. Yeah. I almost vomited because of that. I oh. knew where everything was, but I almost vomited in a big way. Um, yeah. I have a lot of problems with dissecting things that were once living. It, it, it's it's an yeah. issue. It's an issue. The more the closer something is to what it looked like in life, the less I want to interact with it when it's dead. True. True. Yeah. But, like, I could see how if that was covered in oil, like, someone would go, what the fuck is that? You know, that... I, I, I could see someone calling I could see somebody. I could see somebody looking at it not covered in oil and being like, what the fuck is that? Oh, yeah, because I did the same thing when I found that image. Because um, that's like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, because that's, you know, my head went from bacterial colonies to, like, that, that fucking monstrosity. Um... Do I think the government stole the sample to cover it up? No, but I can see a conspiracy-minded employee trying to take the sample before the government could. Yeah, that's that seems super likely. Yeah, I could see them like grabbing that earthworm clump and being like, I, I gotta get this before the CIA but, gets it. But you see, the thing there is, you should at least bring it to get tested. <laughs> yeah. Like... 100%. If you're stealing it to keep it away from the government, you should still, like, like the point is to get it tested still. Like. <sighs> you lazy fucking conspiracy yeah. theorists. So, going down the line of uh, colonies, I looked at the idea of it being a uh, siphonophore, which is colonies of different organisms that may appear to be one. Um, and the one I think people will be most aware of is the Portuguese man o' war and these tend to be really cool looking creatures and if you found one it would indeed seem like an alien or mutant creature mm -hmm. um, however it would appear that these bad boys are rather fragile and tend to live out in like the ocean uh, even like being near the shore is too much for them to survive um, so I don't think it's one of these kinds of creatures yeah um, that seems yeah. unlikely they, those fuckers hurt the man of wars. They do. My sister got stung by a jellyfish, and that's how she found out she's allergic to jellyfish. Oh no. Yeah. Oh god. I think if my memory is correct, uh, when I was in Hawaii, we like went to like a weird little like area that you could die like do snorkeling in, right? On the side of the road. Yeah. Because apparently that's just a thing that's all over Hawaii. Um and my dad got like stung by something and it was like wicked and uh somebody somebody like who was local to the area was like like did a <laughs> to it <laughs> because it was yeah. so like <laughs> it was so rough <laughs> <coughs> oh jeez uh anywho uh. but you see the other thing too is uh that whole like colony thing Totally fits yeah. in with slivers because slivers are like a hive mind. So maybe it was just a sliver. Yeah. So Oh, wait a second. Thing, wait a second. This was eighty six. Huh? Yeah. Go on with what you're saying. I have a I have a hypothesis, but I need oh. I need data. So so what you're talking about something was being written as if there was a word count that they needed to be hit? Yeah. There's a a, a guy who writes for um the T C Palm called Will Greenley. Mm -hmm. And he writes the best news articles because he'll talk about something. Like, he'll describe what a remote control is. Because, like, mm -hmm. someone will have been arrested holding a remote control. And he'll be like, well, a remote control is a device commonly found in households. Like, it's like like he's trying to fill out, um, just hit the word count of something. Um, Inserting uh, hidden, like, hidden spaces. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, yes. I have a new hypothesis. Shoot. Okay. So this was 86, right? Yeah. So when when did Slivers enter Magic the Gathering? Tempest block. Or Tempest set. When did Tempest come out? October 14th, 1970, 97. This was, this oh, was, shit. This was a fucking ARG, Brandon. It was 100% an ARG. It was a really, really bad 
bad and completely failed ARG, but it was an ARG. <laughs> uh, oh, so here's here's a green... Like, they're fantastic. The Greenly... I'll cut this out if it sucks anyway. But, so, like, Greenly... The guy who writes like he like he's writing a high school essay with a word count mm -hmm. um, wrote an article called "Off the Beat: Man Sings Journey to Jail, but Cops Don't Stop Believing He's DUI." Uh, Vera Beach saying, "What's this? What's what's a guy do on the ride to jail?" Um, Seth Coffee, twenty five, apparently was asked to listen to music and sing a Journey power anthem from nineteen eighty one, according to an arrest affidavit. The case began September 2nd when Indian River County Sheriff's deputy stopped a pickup. Investigators said the driver, uh, Coffee, didn't look before pulling out uh, on US-1 in front of a patrol vehicle and wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Coffee smelled of, of booze, uh, had cases of beer in his back seat, and empty cans in the truck bed. Uh, he said he'd imbibed three or four beers uh, at one point, then said six. Coffee of Vera Beach was arrested on DUI charge after taking field sobriety exercises. Uh, while en route to jail, Mr. Coffee asked to listen to music. The affidavit states he proceeded to sing Don't Stop Believing. Don't Stop Believing is one of three <laughs> hits from Journey's seventh studio album, which was released in 1981. Who? The song begins, just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Just a city boy raised in South Detroit he took the midnight train going anywhere what? over the years the song gained a foothold in popular culture and is considered by some to be possibly one of Journey's greatest hits after the journey to jail Coffee's blood alcohol content measured Jesus. .252 Jesus Christ <laughs> talk it's about more than three times. the lead yeah Talk about three times the legal limit of .08, meaning it could be difficult to argue uh, to don't stop believing that coffee may have been impaired. So you can see what I mean by this guy writing like like who he's needs, got a word count. Okay, who need, two things. Who needs an explanation of what the song Don't Stop Believing is? And two, who needs the first two sentences of Don't Stop Believing like, like uh, who needs the first eight bars of Don't Stop yeah, Believing? Yeah, who needs that? Like, and like, like an arrest report. Like well, right but, up. Well, I'm also saying that from the the perspective of if you've ever heard it, you know it. Yeah. Like like why? I'll put I'm gonna put this in the links below too. Jesus Christ. Oh. I, I I I Everything that guy writes never fails to let you down. It's fantastic. I'm not gonna stop I, I won't don't stop believing that he'll let me down. Uh, that that the way he wrote that too at the end, it could be difficult to argue to don't stop believing that coffee may have been impaired. That is so poorly written. He thinks he's a genius. Oh, totally. Oh, hundred percent. I can he totally thinks he's a genius. Zero doubt in my mind that 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 dude wrote that and was like he sat back and was like, I know, I know how to write. I know how to write good. Yeah, like if you need if you're if this. If you're ever taken like a big old dumper, go on your phone, look up Will Greenley, G R E E N L E E, and the TC Palm, and you will never be let down by his articles because he will just describe uh, journey. I'll say you'll always be let down by his articles, and that's the charm, which is the, like the fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anywho, I think that's our episode, right? That's our episode. All right, cool. So if you enjoyed the podcast, uh, be sure to check out CryptoPDCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptoPDCast.com. I don't really post much because I don't really have content to post because we don't have pictures of cryptids. Uh, no, we could throw up the odd... Oh, we could throw up a picture of the Like odd the book screen grab from like... We could throw up the yeah, picture like of the Yeah, like the picture book, of yeah. the books or like the... The weird, creepy, like, worm clump or some shit oh, on occasion. Oh, God, I don't want to put that on the Instagram. Just make people sad. Yeah, that, that make people sad. Give people, like, a, a little inside look about, like, what's inside the uh, uh, copies. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, we have, we're at the four-year, we passed the four-year anniversary of Cryptopedia. Oh, shit! Like, yeah, literally the last four episode years. we published was our four-year anniversary, and we completely forgot it. So. Yeah, so happy anniversary. Yeah, we did that thing, which is. Did, did I... 
I honestly, Brandon, didn't Is think this recorded. I, I didn't. Oh no. Is the episode recording? Uh oh, Brandon. What do you mean? Oh no 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 yeah yeah no it's recording sorry sorry I, I I like half thought out loud I meant to say did I record the the date of the first episode on their spreadsheet? Oh I have it it's it's on the date of public. Like, so it's it's recording. Yeah. Okay I was about to say yeah, I'm like it, it's on, I think it was it's the twenty eighth of the spreadsheet. I think it was the twenty eighth of it's September or something. November twenty fourth, uh, twenty eighteen. It it was September twenty. Oh, it sorry, September. September. It was definitely oh, yep, September. Oh, yep, 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 9, yeah, yep. 9 Okay, okay, okay. I was off by four days. Anywho, um, but yeah, so so we did that. Uh, I honestly didn't expect the podcast to be still running at this point, I'm going to be honest. No. No. But it's it's fun. I mean, at this point, it's just an excuse for you and I to have uh, like an hour to two hours a week, uh, every other week to hang out. Of like hanging yeah, out. So, yeah. And then everyone, all you, all you weirdos that we love because you're weirdos listen to it because you know you're weird too and that's okay same kind of weird it's okay uh our twitter is at cryptopediacast.com our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com be sure to send mean things to there because that always that doesn't send me into a, a sadness spiral <laughs> um we have a, tw- a youtube channel which i have to get around to updating the cryptopedia website to be like com slash videos so it redirects to the YouTube channel but I'm too lazy. Oh, okay. Um, there's bad transcripts on there. I need to go through it. But they are existent. Yeah. They exist. They're existing. We're all, all caught up. Yeah. So hell yeah. Yeah, I try to I, I have a script that like automatically builds the stuff for YouTube. Although now now fucking Podbean actually builds the stuff but it, it I don't like how the like the visuals of it as much, so I I don't bother using yeah. them. Um, we also have a Patreon, which more or less supports the podcast uh, in terms of like paying the, I think one hundred and fifty dollars a year it takes to keep the the podcast running, more or less. Um, so because I I only know that because the the charge just came out of my account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, just to thank our jackalopes, we've got, of course, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, Will Smith, Lenwood Sharp, and Bushcraft Kelso. I should probably check to make sure that list is correct at some point. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we have a Facebook group yeah. that people join still because they're probably listening to old back episodes where we're talking about join it and we don't do that much anymore but we do have a discord that's active yeah we have a discord that's active and terrible at the same time so it's yeah that's true that's the only way i can describe it it's active and terrible um our kind of terrible yeah. it's filled with degenerates yes it's it's a degenerate discord there's no <laughs> there's no if ands or buts about it there's degeneracy in there if if you want to be part of a message board well, the degenerates that have the same interests as you, go there. Yeah, that's a that's a thing. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Because as as uh, as we know, uh, I wait until the last minute to do my episodes because my job is literally writing. So <laughs> when I do my fun <laughs> stuff, I wait until the last minute to do fun stuff writing because I'm John. Yeah. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com, um, which I should probably update because I to not look like I'm a food brand anymore. Yeah, it still looks like a food brand. Uh, there's a, pe- yeah, there's a picture of Pika it. on there, though. Yeah, she's all cute and adorable. Yeah, yeah. Um, luckily, like she's she's asymptomatic, but she's positive. We're all we're all full of the ickies. Um, but I should probably turn it back into like a guitar building website. Because I had to reference it. Because I had to fix. I made the biggest fuck up. You. It was so was bad. Was that the, the the like fret placement or whatever? No, it was. I fucked up the spacing between the the my my humbuckers. Okay, that was it. But luckily, it's just for like a project. But by like a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but it's fixable, and I, I'm gonna make the uh, the. I like fixing things in a way where it's obvious something work was done, right? So, so you could either hide something and like try to repair something in a way where it's invisible, but inevitably you'll always be able to find the thing that you did on mm. it, or you could like accentuate it and like 
cover the fix in like gold leaf or like really make it stand out and incorporate well, it into the build itself. That's literally like a Japanese thing. It's like Kintsugi or something like that. Yeah. So like I that's what I tend to try to lean towards if I can make something um more artistic in the fix and make make the mistake part of the work itself instead of trying to like hide it. Mm. Um as long as it's still going to be, you know, as functional as it would have been. Mm-hmm. It, it's um, it's called kintsugi, which is like gold joinery. It's like a yeah. It's like acknowledging it, it, instead of like hiding the repair, it acknowledges the fact that something was like fucked and like highlights the yeah. fact that like it's it's like a there's like a whole like philosophical thing to it, right? Um, the f- Japanese philosophy of wabi sabi, embracing the flawed or imperfect. Yeah, like that's uh, that's I prefer my repairs to be that way. If it doesn't have to be gold leaf, it could be like resin impregnated with like some kind of nice powder or whatever. But yeah. make it look nice. You know, mistakes can be beautiful. Um, my email is brandon at cryptopediacast dot com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. My Instagram is at mu twenty fifty seven. My Twitter is at jf dunham. My website is john dot com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast dot com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs>